lesson algebra form, lesson 88. You guys, it's our last lesson before our midterm and our spring break. And so it's going to be a good one. You know that we are going to practice solving quadratic equations. Oh, this isn't turning out the way I wanted. Okay. Uh, we've been working on this. What we're going to do in this lesson is bring together a lot of little steps that we've been working on. Okay? Um, so it's nothing earth-shakingly new. It's just consolidating a number of different factors. The first thing I want to remind you is that the standard form of a quadratic equation And this is something, again, you already know, standard form, not standard farm, is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. This is our starting point for all of these equations. You know this, you've seen it 100 times, or at least 20, 10, 20 times. Um, and it's familiar, we're just going to put it to use. Okay, example, and you know how to factor. We've got all kinds of tools we're going to use on this. Use the factor method to find the roots of x squared minus 18 equals 3x. John, what the heck? So the first thing we know before we even go anywhere else with this is this is messed up. We don't like this. So we're going to subtract the 3x and fix it. x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals 0. There, I feel much better. Now, I look back to my instructions again, and it says use the factor method. I don't like that terminology because we're all the different ways that we have man-eating dragon, completing the square, by inspection, those are all methods of factor. So John says factor method, he means what I say by inspection. We just look at it. Okay? So what that means is you don't have to eat the man you don't have to eat the man eating dragon. No, you never have to do that. We don't have to use the man eating dragon. John's given us one that we can solve by inspection. So two numbers that multiply to this and add to that. Um, there are I think six and three is the way to go. And it's going to be minus 6 and plus 3, right? That multiplies to negative 18 and it adds to negative 3. Okay, bueno. Now we have our old friend that we call the zero factor theorem. And it says, I'm not going to write this down because we've talked about it before. If two numbers multiply to give you zero, then either the first one is zero or the second one is zero, right? That's just simple multiplication table logic. The only way to get zero as a product is to have zero as one of the factors. So at this point, we know that either x minus 6 equals zero or x plus 3 equals zero. And then we can quickly hit it with an algebra stick and get x equals 6 or x equals minus 3. And the way, I uh, know John just says it's fine to write it like that is our answer. What he wants us to do, though, is plug back in to our original expression and make sure it works. So we're going to do a little check section. I'll tell you what, I don't like to check my work. It bothers me. It seems like extra work. I don't want to do it. But for John, I will. So if x is 6, I'm using this original expression. I'm not even going to fix it up, okay? I'm going to use the very first thing he gave us. So that tells me that 6 squared minus 18 should equal 3 times 6, right? I'm just plugging it in here. 6 squared minus 18 equals 3 times 6. This is 36 minus 18 equals 18. 36 minus 18, yay, it works, right? 
Now I can check this answer. I'm just gonna put a little divider here. Um, minus three, okay, so I'm plugging minus three into that same original expression. Minus three squared minus 18 equals three times minus three. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Grace. She's getting up to stretch her legs. Hello, puppy. Okay, minus three squared, that's nine. Nine minus 18 equals, and this multiplied equals minus nine. Good girl. She just, wrote, just turned around 18 times and laid that down in the sun. Okay, nine minus 18 is minus nine. Does it equal minus nine? Yes. Okay, so our answer's checked out. Everything's good, there they are. Okay, that's the first lesson. How do you feel about that? Kind of fun, right? Everything's humming along. Example 88.2. Let's see what other tricks John has up his sleeve. There are four problems in this lesson. We're on the second one. Okay, this time he says find the roots of minus 25 equals minus 4x squared. Find the roots is the same thing as saying solve for x. Roots simply means answers. He's just being fancy. Okay. Now this, I look at this and I go, okay, first of all, it's messed up because it's spread across the everything to the left. That's just kind of my tried and true strategy. That goes away. Now I have 4x squared minus 25 equals zero. I put it in descending order. And now I go, oh, this is not a quadratic equation. This, I recognize the 4 and the 25 as perfect squares. This is a difference of two squares problem. Not one of those fancy cubed ones that we had fairly recently, but this is just an old school um, difference of two squares, and I know that what I do with those, write this in your um, homework cover if you don't have it already, your homework notebook cover. Um, this is how I factor these. I put the plus first and the minus second. It doesn't matter because order doesn't matter in multiplication, but this is how I factor that. So what I have to do is figure out what's the a value and what's the b value. If this is the squared, then it must be 2x and 5, right? So now I can use these numbers and this formula to write out my answer. It's going to be 2x minus 5 times 2x plus 5. But this is equal to 0, right? It's an equation. It's not just an expression. This just shows me how to factor the one side of it. But I still have to set it equal to 0. All right. So now I break out my zero factor theorem again. And I know that if I'm multiplying two things together that equal zero, then one has to be zero or the other has to be zero. So I write 2x minus 5 equals zero or 2x plus 5 equals zero. Hit them both with my algebra stick. 2x equals 5, and we get x equals 5 over 2, and pretty soon you'll be able to do most of this work in your heads, your head, because I'm only talking to one of you at a time, and as far as I remember, you each only have one head. Um, there's no, you know, the three-headed dog in Harry Potter. None of you are that. Um, X equals minus 5 over 2. All right. Okay. I feel good about that, but now we have to check it. Oh, my gosh. You guys, I don't want to. But I will. Um, and, again, I'm going to use this original expression. I'm not going to use any of my reformatted versions. So it's um, for this. I'll do it in my columns again. Right? So this will be this value, and I use my original thing, my original equation up here. Minus 25 equals minus 4 times 
that squared. And I can see right away that if this answer is, if either one of these answers is right, they're both going to be right because once I square the numbers here, the minus sign is going to go away. All right, so let's go ahead and do that though. This would be 25 over 4, right? I do my parentheses first. 25 over 4 is the square of that. And I'm multiplying it by minus 4. Okay, I'm just going to do this side because the left side is already simplified. These cancel and all that's left is the minus sign. So I get minus 25 equals minus 25. Yay, it works. And the same thing over here. I'm just going to work on the right side. It's minus 4 times, and then this squared is 25 over 4. Remember that the square only relates to what's in the parentheses. It doesn't relate to what's out here. And we, when we have a square, we square the numerator and the denominator. There's some basics to remind you. These cancel. The minus sign is left. I get minus 25. And then I bring this down. Yay, that one works too. All right, I checked my work. I feel very disciplined. Make sense? Moving on. 88.3, we're halfway done. Whenever I flip my page, I stand up to make sure that I'm still centered in my phone, which is up on the chair. And the chair that I'm sitting on always squeaks and creaks when I sit up and down, so. That's kind of an added audio feature to my presentation here. I hope you're really enjoying that. Um, find the values of x that satisfy x minus 56 equals minus x squared. Again, John is just giving us weird ways of asking the same thing. Find the values of x that satisfy this just means solve for x. It means the same thing as find the root. He's just trying to throw curveballs at us. All right, just like always, we get everything over here on the left and then see what we've got. We know we want to write it in proper order. x squared plus x minus 56 equals 0. Okay, here we have a nice tried and true quadratic. I can easily see that John... He seems to be re being pretty nice about letting us factor by inspection rather than dragging the man eating dragon out of his cave. Um, and so 56, well, that's 7 times 8. We want it to be positive. Negative here and positive here, so that means 8 is the bigger number. Or the, yeah, 8 is the positive, 7 is the negative. That gives us a positive one here, but a negative there. Yay. Zero factor theorem. Either x plus 8 equals 0 or x minus 7 equals 0. I bet you guys have got the shortcut in your head now that you can just mentally change sides and change the sign. So that's negative 8 and x equals positive 7. I'll say that again more slowly in case that's news to your brain. When I have something like this and I want to just change the side, of the equation that this is on, I can just change the sign of it as I move it across, right? Here it's negative 7, so I'll be adding 7 to both sides, so I have positive 7. Little shortcut. Okay, those are my answers. Let me box them so I don't lose track of them. I didn't box my last ones, and that's bothering me. Let me go back. It was here. Okay. Oh, I feel so much better now. All right, so now we're going to check these. And again, just to be extra pristine, I'm going to go all the way back to this. So I'm going to say minus, minus 8, minus 56 equals minus, minus 8 squared. Buckets, very necessary in this one because I've got minus signs and I've got a minus value. Yikes. So now we say 8 minus 56 equals minus 
I did wrong. This is not a minus x. This shouldn't be here, right? It's just x minus 56. So there's my x minus 56. So this stays negative. Okay, and then this, minus 8 squared is 64, so this would be minus 64. Okay, so I just copied wrong here. Um, minus 8 minus 56 would be minus 64 equals minus 64. So yay, it checks. Okay, that looks good. And then we'll do the same thing over here. We have 7 minus 56 equals minus 7 squared. Okay, this is positive 7 minus 56, so it's working in the other direction. So this would be negative 49 equals, this is 49, negative 49. Okay, so both of those solutions check out as well. John is just being so kind to us. Uh, example 88.4 solve 3x squared so this time he just says solve none of his dramatic statements okay this is not quite the way we want it we want to bump him over I'm going to just move my space over here 3x squared minus 6x so this is another one of those change sides change signs deal. It's positive here, so it will be negative over here. Okay. Now, I'd like to factor a 3 out. I notice that there's a 3 in each one of these terms. And I don't want to make this more complicated than it needs to be. I'd rather have just a plain x squared here. We know how to factor now when we have a digit other than 1 in front of the x squared term, but I don't want to use that. Oh, no, that's not you guys. That's the um, Algebra 2 kids. They learned how to deal with this. But we don't want to. We want to factor out the 3. So we're going to have x squared minus 2x minus 3. Does that make sense? We can check this to make sure it's right by distributing it back in our heads. 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. Okay, I did this properly. All right, so we'll just leave that 3 alone here, and then we'll factor this by inspection, which John seems to be doing. Um, multiply to this, right? three and they add to minus two. Okay, beautiful. So now we're multiplying three things together and our answer is zero. So we have three possible options because we have three factors here. So I can say number one, either three equals zero. No, that's drunken. That's never going to work. So we don't have to consider that anymore. Or x minus three equals zero or x plus 1 equals 0. Those are our three options based on our three factors. We've already ruled this one out. That's just silly. Um, x minus 3, that would be x equals 3, right? As I change sides, I change signs. Or x equals minus 1. I'm saying these are my answers. Now I will check. Make my table right here. There's my original expression. So 3 times 3 squared minus 6 times 3 equals 9. 3 squared is 9. 3 times 9 is 27 minus 18 equals 9. 27 minus 18 is 9. Yay, it works. All right, now we'll check the other one. 3 times minus 1 squared minus 6 times minus 1 equals 9. Right? I'm just plugging these values into the original form of our problem. Minus 1 quantity squared is 1. I'm following order of operations. I'm doing my powers of exponents. Oh, excuse me. I'm doing, I'm doing my powers. Powers and exponents are the same thing. I'm doing my powers slash exponents and roots first then parentheses, then multiplication, then addition, subtraction. Uh, okay, so one, three times 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 one, three times
times 1 is 3. 6 times negative, well, it's negative 6 times negative 1, so it's plus 6 equals 9. 3 plus 6 is indeed 9. Yay. Everything works out. Those are our four examples. Remember that three of them were classic quadratics. But this second one, we had a difference of two squares. So every once in a while, he'll throw a little curveball in at you. He did not throw in that big, ugly, somewhere difference of cubes that we recently ran across. That's harder than it needs to be. All right, that is lesson 88. Uh, I'm quickly looking at the practice problems, and I do not see any difference of two square problems there. They are classic. Here, I'll show you. They're just classic quadratics, a squared plus b, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Just have to rearrange to get them looking cute. And they are um, factorable by inspection. You don't have to man-eating dragon, either one. I just did them in my head. Okay, beautiful. Lesson 88, that is our last lesson until after spring break. Congratulations, you made it. Assuming you didn't die during that lesson, congratulations, you made it.